Hey, uh, I ain't been on here in forever. I'm depressed. Things just happening and happening and happening. I'm not giving up, but things just happening. I know y'all probably hear that clicking. That's cause I'm broke down in a few hours. I'm here at um where am I at? I mean I had the darn night. Stanton. What is Stanton? S T A E N T O N Stanton, Tennessee. That's where I'm at. I know y'all don't usually see me smoking. But, oh. I'm having one right now. And it's not... It's not the breaking down part that, that gets me... <clears throat> I was looking at... Um, what you, oh, crap. What's his name? Uh, I call him Teddy Bear. But he looked like a teddy bear to me. But I was um, looking at um, his video. He was asking me how the trucking life was. I knew I was having issues last night. But I was trying to get somewhere to West Memphis. And I was going to drop this trailer. I, I already made the call last night that I was going to drop my um, trailer. And to take the other loads off of me. Because I'm having problems with my truck. So it's like best if I just go ahead on and cut this load and loose. Try to make it to West Memphis cut this load of loose there or relay the load relay the load there and um see about getting my truck fit getting big baby fits <clears throat> well i had to stop here because i was running low on fuel so as you can see i only got 50 gallons i didn't need to get that much but i was like i just put 50 gallons in here that'll get me on the west memphis i'm less than an hour away and I can cut the load or loose and maybe they can look at it um look at my truck and possibly get her to go on or whatever 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 well once i switched off here like i said i ain't had no choice but to stop or be sitting on the side of the road out of diesel or something because i was low but um <clears throat> when i got back in the truck the thing the issue is she'll start up what he called it a slice a slay cylinder she start up just fine the problem is um getting to go in gear so you know how you in neutral and when you start your truck up um push the clutch and all that stuff get it you know get your truck to start up start up and then you push the clutch put it in gear and then you pull out well when i go to put mine in gear she just grind she just just be grinding and so I don't forgot what they call it but something isn't stopping <clears throat> in order for it to go in gear and so um this morning when I left from the truck stop what I did was I um <clears throat> I heard a beat I um was able I guess to get whatever needed to stop stop so I could put it in gear and then pull up while she was switched out start up down. Shut the truck off. Put the truck in gear. Start the truck up. And then pull off. I was able to do that. But then, you know how, like, when you leave it out from any place or business or whatever, or even home, you stop. You have to stop to make sure ain't nothing coming. Well, when I was trying to stop and, like, put it in, like, a lower gear, like, third gear or whatever, she kept pulling. She went in gear, but she kept pulling. And then I'm pushing down on the clutch trying to get her to stop. <clears throat> Wasn't nothing coming, which luckily where I was, it was wide open at. So it wasn't nothing coming. Hello, sir. You're a nice looking man. You still ain't making me feel better just because you look good. I don't feel better. I'm a look though. I'm still human. With all my problems that I'm having. Anyway. Um 
so luckily it wasn't nothing coming or anything like that so um because i thought it was gonna of course i was gonna make a shit down right there before i pull out in front of someone and i just be stuck right there in the driveway but it was wide enough for whatever people could have got around me so anyway moving past that i get here to this pilot and i'm like the next um truck stop that i recall that i see will be in like the west memphis area i don't know if i'm gonna make it i don't know if i'm gonna make it there so tell you what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna go ahead on and pull over to this pilot and get me some fuel so i pulled up here just fine and even when i got up there to the traffic light i noticed that um it was still kind of doing the same thing so but the light was green so i was able to keep going and i come on up in here but then when i pulled up here to stop she didn't do that so i'm like okay then maybe it'll be okay so i switch off um get some fuel and stuff go ahead and use the bathroom and all this stuff give me something to drink while i was here when i come back out here getting the truck to go no she said hell no she tired she done stick a fork in her she done so now we're just sitting here in the fuel hour so i done call we get a tow truck <clears throat> they're on their way i call schneider let them know i'm relaying the load at the west memphis yard so i'm still taking the load to the west memphis yard well tow truck gonna take us to the west memphis yard called the um shop in west memphis um they can fix it i don't know when they'll be able to fix it that's the problem i don't know when they'll be able to fix it but they can fix it and i'll probably see how long it'll take them to fix it because my next step was to um make i guess basically make like an appointment for um uh uber i noticed you can do an appointment for an uber reserve a hotel room um and then reserve a rental car that's what i was gonna do next um but before i do all that because later i already told me how much it was gonna cost to get a toll over there nine hundred and fifty dollars i think that's what she said i heard that nine hundred anything after that didn't even matter no more I'm like shit <clears throat> so um but get her told over there but the reason why I was talking about the price is because the rental car I was looking at about how much it was gonna cost to go home because once I went home I was gonna go home see my plan was to take this load to Dallas drop this load get my next load go to Louisiana I was gonna be in Louisiana Wednesday morning and then um so I drop Wednesday morning head on home and which bring me to my next thing, the reason why I'm, I'm kind of like, oh. yeah, it's been a lot going on. That's part of the reason why I haven't been doing videos. Just part of the reason why I haven't been doing videos. There's been a lot going on. Um, but um, I don't want to talk much about it because I go to crime. But one of my exes died. So with finding that information out, <clears throat> that's been like heavy on my brain finding out that he passed and y'all know me i'm a hellraiser and so we used to argue all the time i mean all the time we used to argue and so the last argument we had i went off on him i told him don't you call me no more i don't want to talk to you never again don't you talk to me no more i always said that <clears throat> and so then a couple of months went by i went talk to him i ain't talking to you so finally, um, probably about a month ago, he was on my mind. Me being stubborn, I'm like, I ain't calling you. I'm not calling. I'm not calling. Cause he be pissing me off. But finally, I broke down and I called him and check on him and stuff. Cause once somebody get on my mind, I'm gonna eventually call you. Now it's up to you if you answer the phone. Cause I have another friend or ex friend. Um, I had tried calling him one time back when I got ready to have my surgery. I had tried um, calling him, reaching out to him, because who knows, I probably wouldn't have woke up. But um, he didn't answer the phone for me, and he sent a text message, like, if this is, if it's me, or whatever, and I was like, I messaged him, told him I would have my surgery and stuff like that. He wasn't rude in the text message. That was the last time I had a thing to say to him. So, I'm not going to beg for conversation, but um, back on my ex. Uh, which he and I, we was just friends. And so, we had a disagreement. Okay, I'm telling you two stories. The one guy who was just my friend, we had a disagreement. 
about something and I refuse to apologize for it because I'm stubborn and I don't believe I was wrong. I'm not gonna apologize to make you feel better. So we had a disagreement about that and now he won't conversate with me. Now I can lie and apologize to him and probably be bad talking to him, but I ain't gonna do it. So I do still be stalking him a little bit. I, I say stalking, just checking up on him, making sure he okay. But I don't engage with him no more. I figured I tried one time. If he want to engage with me, he know my number. He know how to get in contact with me. Hell, everybody know how to get in contact with me. <clears throat> but my ex, I did call him. And I called him. And he answered the phone. He always answered the phone so sweet. I thought I'd been on my mask fear. He answered the phone and stuff. And so we was talking, the crazy part about it, we never addressed what we were, I forgot what we was arguing about. <laughs> I forgot our last argument, so that's kind of like the part that pushed me. I knew I was mad, but I forgot why I was mad. And so he answered the phone, and then he was like, my baby. He like, you gonna always be my baby. I don't care if you be mad with me and all that stuff. And so I was happy to hear his voice, and then he was talking about, cause he be, but I ain't gonna say stalking, but you know how we always check on, uh, if, if we if we still friends. But he had sent me another friend request on Facebook, cause he got a different page. And so we was talking, and he was talking about he saw my pictures on there. Uh, I was having dinner with a driver, and I was like, yeah, that was me trying to cheer a driver up, because he had lost a loved one, his mom to be exact, and we was on the road. So that was me trying to uh, cheer him up. He like, I want to tell him about it. I said, look here, I'm not your woman. You don't tell nobody about nothing. I don't belong to nobody. I belong to me and God and my mom and daddy. That's it. And so well, we had a real good conversation. And uh, he was happy. And he was talking about um, family trips that they had took. And I don't know, it just felt good talking to him. So then... Uh, he called me again, and um, we just talked briefly for a little bit, and then um, probably about a couple of weeks went by, and then I just um, my auntie called me, and she asked me, "Is this true?" That he had done passed. And I was like, I don't know. I was like, what you talking about? So then I go on Facebook. And I see what his sister had put on there. And so. Well, anyway, it turned out to be true. And so. I was glad and thankful that. I got a chance to talk to him. Before he passed. And you know, we made up. We made up and I wasn't mad no more and he wasn't mad no more and he was actually happy. And we had a good conversation. So I was glad about that because I think it probably would have destroyed me if he would have passed and knowing the last thing that I said to him was don't ever call me no more. And so to be able to talk to him and hear his voice and know that he was happy and tell each other that we loved each other and stuff like that. Because we dated like when I was young. I was like 18, 19 years old. But like my exes, I, the ones who want to remain friends with me, I've remained friends with them and stuff like that. And you know, still, you know, do me talk my shit and stuff like that. And it's just like with him because he hasn't went on and um, he got married, got divorced. And you know, we still remain in contact. We can go a year and don't say nothing to each other. And then when we get each other on the phone, it's like, we don't even miss a beat. So, and that's even with friends and stuff like that. No one that I have, um, it have to be someone that I dated. It's just anybody like that. I just like remain in contact with people as best as I can. Sometimes it'd be like a year or so or whatever before we speak. And then when we speak, and it's just the same thing with being angry. Because sometimes, like, I talk shit. I talk a lot of shit. And, all, and like, you know, I have to stand, stand my ground on certain things. And But it's never to the point of where, you know, I hate you. You get what I'm saying? And 
one, I probably hate what you did. But it's never to the point where I hate you. And so, right now, all of my exes, every guy I've dated, um, for the most part, I'm in communication with one of them. I'm mad with him right now, but I, I, I remember why I'm mad with him. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back, y'all. I know it just picked up and stuff like that. But I think I'll tell you about one of my exes. I remember why I'm mad with him. <laughs> but um he's still my boy. He's still my boy, which he and I the same way. We argued now. I dated him when I was in high school. We would cuss each other out all the way the fuck out. <laughs> we would cuss each other out. And um last time he pissed me out. Now I don't want to talk to you no more. <laughs> Cause I'm upset with you. But he know. I know these years shoot. I'm 40 now. I think I started dating him when I was 16, 17 years old. Somewhere in there. And um actually him and the guy that passed. He was mad with that guy because I met the guy that passed in Job Corps. And I ran off the Job Corps to get away from my other ex. <laughs> and so he thought we was dating at that time. But I like, even if we were dating, I wasn't with you. So it don't matter. But we wasn't dating. However, we ended up dating. I said, you kind of pushed us together. You, like, created this whole skit about me and him being together. So we were like, hmm, your skit sound pretty good. Might well go and make it happen. <laughs> So, he used to be, last time we talked, we was talking about this. This is like my first ex. He's like the first guy I dated. And so, but I'm 41 now. And we still in communication with each other. We'll still talk to each other. I ain't talking to him right now because I'm mad with him. <laughs> but I'm going to check on him because like, I don't know. That's just me. I just weary and stuff like that because like, I don't hate nobody. I say my piece. Now, I'm not going to just let you walk all over me or anything like that or say anything you want to say to me or any, or you think you can say to me that I ain't going to say nothing back I got stuff to say so I'm going to say something back but uh, I'm going to reach out to him probably I know he okay but I want to hear his voice to make sure he okay I know once I do that they're going to open up the floodgates we're going to be arguing again <laughs> but um so but yeah dealing with my ex passing and like I said I am so glad and thankful that I got a chance to talk to him so like I don't know like where he was I know he had been sick I know he had been sick and I talked to his sister and she was like you know they are he you know he always been sick he's a drinker he was he was a drinker and like with his liver and kidneys and he was supposed to stop drinking and they told him like if you don't quit drinking it's gonna kill you and so but Dale Dale was Dale he was hard here and so he was still drinking he was like well I'm not drinking liquor and I know he wasn't being 100% truthful with me and then he also one of those guys who didn't like to go to the doctor or anything because last night when uh, in the hospital if I'm not mistaken I think he got so sick that they lost him one time and they had to bring him back and so, but you know, he was still drinking, so. But yeah. I miss Dale. I miss him. Even our arguments. I remember I used to call him and be like, what you doing? I ain't got nobody to argue with. What you doing? And so, it won't be long. It'll be long. <laughs> but yeah. So dealing with that and then before that, you know, people die from COVID that I know. And it's just, it's just been so much. And then now with Big Baby breaking down, it's it's been a lot, y'all. It's been a lot. And still out here on this road, trying to work, trying to go, trying to move like like you're on bother, like a lot of people don't know <clears throat> that a lot of drivers is mentally dealing with something and they still trying to work. And then you have people on the road because a lot of us is miles, some of us is thousands of miles from home. 
from loved ones and all of that stuff and mentally dealing with stuff like some mornings I get up like 4 o'clock in the morning I start riding and then sometimes I just sleep in and I just sleep and then I start riding so it can be mentally draining on a driver and I don't think enough people pay attention to that and you know people ask you you know how you doing me I'd be like I ain't good I'm not good so, and then and they just say, well, I hope things feel better. Now, my B.O.R., don't get me wrong. My B.O.R., I tell her I ain't good. But what's wrong, Toy? What's wrong? So I can't speak for every Schneider employee. But when I tell her I'm not good, she want to know what's wrong. And because she, she done got in my business. She done got in my business. And I put her in it now. <clears throat> because um, I don't know if she know it or not. But she's basically a stress relief for me because sometimes that's all you want somebody to ask you is how you doing how are you doing and so and i take advantage some people they'll just be like well i hope they get better and then that's that but like with her well what's wrong i'll be like i'm not good well what's wrong and so then i get to telling her what's wrong sometimes she'll give me some solutions or whatever the case may be or ways sometimes she just say some encouraging words and sometimes you don't have to say anything she just let me unload on her and then that's just enough to make me feel better <clears throat> and this truck they need to, i went in there and i told pilot that i'm broken down in the fuel line and um thought maybe they'll come out here with a cone because i ain't got no cone and they didn't. It cold out there, though. And a driver just pulled up behind me. Had no driver been pulling up, but another driver, he told me to turn my four ways on. So I did that, so having no other drivers been pulling up behind me. But this one particular driver, he just pulled up behind me. I don't know why. I ain't moving. I ain't got no other choice. I can't move. If I choose to move. I actually choose to move. But I can't go nowhere. Because Big Baby said, buff that, I ain't going nowhere. So, but anyway... My B.O.R., yeah, she let me unload. Sometimes she don't have to say nothing. Just hear it. She just hear what I'm dealing with. And that be enough for me. And so, I don't know about other companies uh, if they do it. But sometimes, it's also on the drivers. But when you have those situations where you tell someone your day ain't going good, then you tell them the issues that you're having, and then their main response, well, I hope everything get better for you. And I hope every every time I hope everything get better for you. I pray everything gets. A lot of people say I'm gonna pray for you, and then they don't pray for you. It's like something to say. Oh, he don't move. I'm just gonna put my jacket on. I was getting ready to walk back there and tell him. Cause I wasn't gonna just let him sit back there, and he can pull it to another field back. <clears throat> but um um, so I'm gonna uh, just do that, and then it'll discourage drivers from actually seeing what's bothering them if something bothering them and then the other thing is it's also a, a feeling a feeling that um how you feel towards someone else the vibe you get from somebody else and if you're not getting like a concerning vibe if it's like something that's like something just something to say like i pray for you and they know like they ain't gonna pray for me there's just something they say then you might not be willing to open up to them and tell them exactly what's going on. So, I don't know. But anyway, y'all, I've been out here too long. I just come in and say what's going on with me and Big Baby now. I'm about to get up here. And I'm trying to decide. See, I don't want to pull all of my stuff down like clothes and stuff to and pack all that up to take to a hotel with me and possibly rent a car i think i started talking about the rent a car rent a car gonna be like almost four hundred dollars i'm already paying nine hundred dollars to get me a bit baby toe it's gonna cost me three hundred dollars because i had to get the low relay i don't know how much it's gonna cost me to get um bit baby fits but if this is just twelve hundred dollars just let's just say twelve hundred dollars i don't even know how much that is but twelve nine twenty one 
and then plus four hundred dollars. That's twenty five hundred dollars right there. And um, then the Uber, that's like ten fifteen dollars. Hotel room, um, seventy eight dollars. So yeah, about twenty two twenty three hundred dollars is what I'm gonna have to shove out. But if they can get Big Baby fixed and going. Um, then I can just, um, get a fix, possibly get a load out of West Memphis and go home, go, go home, take Big Baby home. Because when I rent the car, I was going to do like a round trip rental, which I always do that, but I was going to need it to get home and to get back up to, um, West Memphis. But if they can fix her, then I just get me a hotel room for tonight. And perhaps the next night and then um that about that'd be about two hundred dollars for the cause seven eight dollars a night so it'd be almost two hundred dollars to uh rent a <clears throat> not rent a hotel well i guess it is rent a room but to get a room um for a couple of nights so they can get her fixed and then i could just take her on home down there because it was some more stuff i want to get done like i want to get the shots um the cab shots thing to be on the back i want to get those changed out and then get an oil change and um i think my oil pan thing got a leak on it because something wrong with the seal something that the guy had told me so i wanted to get that done also Anyway, y'all, that's what's going on, man. I'm sorry to be on here rambling some, but I just, oh, I did a video when I was in Indiana. I got stuck up there. I probably gonna put that video up. It wasn't them me walking back to the truck in the snow because mama wanted a picture of Big Baby with snow. I don't know why it ain't cute, me and Big Baby. <laughs> it ain't cute, me and Big Baby stuck up here when that storm was coming through. <laughs> That ain't cute. But, um, it did look all right. Trucks covered in snow and stuff like that. But still, it ain't all right when you somewhere you don't really, really want to be. Thankfully, I was safe. I was at the yard. That's one thing I like about Schneider. They got yards everywhere. Even though I've been talking about leaving. But that's kind of the reason why I'm hesitant on leaving. Because, you know, I have my issues. But you have issues no matter where you go. I have my issues and stuff like that. Um, disagreements, I guess you could call them. But still, I like Schneider. I like them, and then they got yards everywhere. So, I was safe at the yard. We were warm. I got to get some batteries, too. For the, the thingy thing. That idle free thing. I'm pointing back there, but it's back, it's on the passenger side. With a step set on the driver's side, my idle free unit. Some have, most people, a lot. Well, I'm going to say most people. Some people have a tripod. I have an idle free, and it has batteries in it. So, I got to get some batteries for that. But anyway, y'all, uh, I'm going to get off of here. It's been nearly 30 minutes. And I guess I called my auntie. Because I noticed she had sent me a text message when I ride down the road. And so she usually um, sent me a text message. And when I stop, I um, check my phone and then I give her a call. When I um, stop for the day. But, so I guess I go on the call her since it ain't like I'm going somewhere. Until that tow truck get here. So I'll talk to y'all later, alright? Bye, y'all be blessed, okay?